record it unfortunately so yeah just have to make sure that we record every session uh, i mean if the faculty forget please do remind you know uh, in your classes because sometimes we just kind of tend to forget okay so the record is on that's great uh, let's pray and uh, we'll get started i just like to request someone whoever can to please lead us in prayer and then we'll uh, uh, study the next chapter Okay, anybody? All right. Uh, Subhajit, are you comfortable to yes, ma pray? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Father God, we come before you in this morning. Father God, thank you for this beautiful uh, day, and and thank you, Father that you've allowed us to join uh, in this class, Father God. We pray, Father, as we learn about building your kingdom and we learn about the various principles, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, give us more insights, Lord. And Lord, help us uh, to uh, to apply all these things in our life, in our churches, Father God, so that we can, we can be used in the advancement of your kingdom, Father God. Father God, bless uh, Pastor, bless us, Father God. So we can receive what what she'll uh, what what we learn through her, Father God. Speak to your spirit, Father God, and Father God, we pray, Lord, help us, Father God, to move with all these things. I believe you will be with us through and to the end. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Subhajit, um, for leading us. Uh, so last session we were talking about the citywide church and how uh, we must strive towards unity how we must um, help one another uh, you know how we must try we must uh, impact the society we looked at um, the spiritual things that need to progress in a in a in a city we looked at social transformation which is essential we looked at you know physical transformation that uh, kingdom builders must engage in and also the marketplace transformation so uh, it's only when we make an impact at a citywide level that the the light of the kingdom of god is impacting you know, people's lives um, uh, so since we're talking about kingdom builders we need to have that kingdom mindset because one church one local church one ministry cannot do it all and then we also said that uh, you know as far as we we uh, know that uh, people are born again they are sincerely um, in agreement to the the core beliefs of scripture uh, we can join hands with them and you know, we we must not try to major on the minors and uh, you know see where there can be differences of opinion instead you know we we uh, agree to uh, walk together with them and uh, it's in togetherness that we will see a great work accomplished for god's kingdom in any any city any region and this is we've talked uh, in terms of the city okay, we've talked in terms of the city but of course you know it's applicable uh, for a region so we can get together with pastors from a certain region ministers of god or a nation even so we join hands together and we saw how everyone has something to contribute and one person cannot uh, will not be gifted and um, have the grace to uh, uh, you know uh, how do you say uh, whatever the kingdom needs for advancement you know one person cannot uh, uh, really provide those inputs so everyone together accomplishes much more so that is what we were dwelling on in the last class and today we move on to something uh, really important Okay, we uh, initially when we started discussing about kingdom building we said that the kingdom is about the kingdom the kingdom is about uh, god because he is the king of the kingdom and then we also stressed a lot about the character of the kingdom builder the character the attitude the approach of a kingdom builder so today's subject 
uh, the the uh, title here, uh, chapter nine, it says brothers, brothers and fathers. Okay, and uh, obviously, even though it says brothers and fathers, uh, it, it is meant for women as well. So sisters and mothers. You, know, you could take it that way. So how can a kingdom builder be a brother, be a father? So it is our attitude in our relationships with others. Okay, uh, and this is really really important um, because you know one can claim to serve God and to um, uh, honor His kingdom, honor the call on one's life, uh, but if we have hatred in our hearts. Towards uh, scriptures say a brother. Who is a brother? Usually uh, in the early church, the term brethren was used for anyone who had committed their life to Christ, anyone who was born again. So a brother, uh, the simple meaning of that is anyone who is in the body of Christ. So if one hates a brother uh, and still claims to love God, um, you know, that, that doesn't equate. Let's look at the scripture from 1 John chapter 2. In fact, if you study the epistles of uh, um, uh, Apostle John, you would find that he repeats this theme over and over and over again. He talks about the importance of love for God, the importance of um, uh, experiencing and understanding the kind of love that God has for each and every one of us. And at the same time, releasing that love to our brothers and sisters. If we don't do that, then uh, you know we, we are missing a link. Something, something within us, something in our relationship with God is not right. So 1 John chapter 2 verses 9 through 11, this is in our notes. Uh, I'm on page number 98. I would like to request uh, one of us to please read it. 1 John 2 verses 9 through 11, please. Anyone? One John two nine and our verses nine to eleven. He who says he is the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Christopher. Uh, and I think that passage is quite uh, self-explanatory, very clear for us to understand. And it simply says that anyone who claims to walk with God or um, claim to be in the light and yet hates his brother is in darkness. Uh, so by... The faith that we have, we are proclaiming that we are children of God, that we are followers of Christ. But with our life, you know, we are contradicting that. Uh, so walking with God also means loving, having regard for our brothers and sisters in Christ. If we, if we don't have that, this passage actually says that one walks in the darkness. Now, it is true that in our uh, journey with God, you know, there uh, might be some seasons of um, aloneness for various reasons. Maybe you know, we are just, um, uh, you know, we, we are just being equipped, prepared by God. So we don't know uh, other believers. We don't know um, other ministers of God. And thereby, there isn't much fellowship. Uh, so that happens. Okay. Uh, now, intentionally if we try to keep ourselves away from others so that we don't have to interact with them we don't have to um, build our relationship with them now that is not something that you know the the bible uh, prescribes so uh, if the season of aloneness happens in our journey yeah it, it, that is normal it happens to all of us uh, but the uh, normal thing to do is also to connect with others as much as possible. I mean, again, uh, it really depends on a, each person's personality and, you know, temperament. So, uh, but scriptures tell us as long as, as far as it is possible, we need to live at peace with everyone. So we do develop you know, relationships. Now, um, 
we must make sure that you know we learn to be brothers or learn to be available to people and also to be fathers now speaking more specifically about being a kingdom builder you know a brother is one who uh, you know like uh, a brother is one who has a relationship uh, with with another brother in the body of christ and who knows that person so that is why the term brother and relates uh, you know with with uh, love relates um, with that sense of tenderness uh, with another believer and that is why we are using the term brother and a father is someone who really cares who wants to nurture who is intentional about seeing the spiritual growth of another uh, a child of god you know, that god has connected uh, to to him or her so uh, that's the definition or that's the understanding of brother and father now for ministers of god you know uh, what really happens is that we become very very busy with ministry work okay and uh, i'm sure everyone can uh, just uh, uh, totally agree with that that you know ministry can get um, really it it can become very demanding and then you know you're spending all your time uh, serving you're spending all your time uh, getting the tasks done you know? you're spending all your time um, you know serving in, in different ways not that it's bad but uh, we may not intentionally make time to develop relationships or uh, you know be a father to others in the body of christ now we'll talk more about it now um, i just wanted to introduce this that you know we as ministers we do struggle and uh, when we say that you know we struggle to have relationships it could also be it could simply be because we are so busy and uh, you know if there are two ministers of god each one is uh, doing their uh you know part of the kingdom work and maybe they're traveling they just don't have the time uh when one person's in the city the other person's not there so it, it gets challenging to really meet and to uh build a relationship to strengthen a relationship and thereby having this fellowship in the kingdom of god where we have brothers we are fathers or mothers to others you know that uh that can be neglected Okay, and that is the the challenge in the kingdom of god so uh as ministers of god you know this this thing about building relationships and we are talking more specifically about building relationships with other ministers okay in the kingdom of god so we if unless we are intentional about this unless we are intentional about being fathers to new ministers who are rising up uh it will not happen it will not happen and the extreme is what we read in the passage here what john says he says that um if we hate okay not being able to make time for others is one thing now if in our hearts we dislike or you know we carry unforgiveness we carry bitterness we we haven't settled you know matters with with uh, other ministers in the in the body of christ maybe in our own city then it becomes very uncomfortable to connect with them and then you know the the gap keeps increasing right uh, and that is not at all a good thing that's not a good thing to have a negative um attitude to have something against a brother uh, or a sister in the kingdom of god in our hearts so we, we need to work on maintaining good relationships as far as possible okay with others and other ministers of god now uh we'll yeah okay uh what does it mean to be a a brother now we can also use terms like fellow laborer okay fellow laborer um so when paul he writes to timothy you know we we understand that you know there was a nice bond that he shared with timothy so he uh, in first thessalonians 3 and verse 2 he says um uh, paul paul says and sent timothy a brother okay a brother minister and a minister of god so he's calling a person who is in the ministry you know during his times as a brother 
okay what else does he call timothy as and he says our fellow laborer in the gospel of christ so you know we see that attitude the attitude is uh, just the way he wrote to the corinthians he said apollos planted uh, or oh, i planted apollos watered you know you you are god's field okay so basically he sees the people as the field and he sees everyone who's working in that field as a fellow worker or a co laborer or uh, he uh, you can also see when he says timothy a minister of god later we will um, talk a little bit more about paul's relationship with timothy um, because this is a special relationship when he found timothy timothy was you know nowhere close to uh, the minister of god that you know we are talking um, about right now but he had an investment in timothy's life and at one point you know paul is recognizing him as a minister of god now for us in the kingdom of god you know the, these things sound very uh, correct you know theoretically correct and biblically correct but to walk in these things uh, is what is very important now we can just look at another minister of god and completely disregard their ministry and think oh what ministry is that person doing you know i am the one who's doing really good ministry but look at how paul sees timothy he says brother he he calls him fellow worker he also calls him uh, you know a minister of god so that's that's a big thing um, and of course you know paul is the paul is the person who actually fathered timothy in the ministry now uh, looking at our relationships today in the kingdom of god uh, you know there is really a need to um, have brothers recognize other brothers as fellow ministers you know um, fellow workers in the kingdom of god uh, does this happen it does happen okay however you no know, as i began by saying that you know ministry can become very busy uh, we we may not have enough time to share our lives with other ministers of god so what ends up happening at least most of the time is a very superficial connect where uh, we we just cross paths at a conference or you know you just cross um, you bump into each other in a in a pastors meeting or you you know just just things like that and there is a certain level of connect as a there's a, a little bit of knowing one another and uh, you know if uh, we make the effort then the relationship can deepen a little bit but otherwise it remains very much at the superficial level and worse still you know in ministry uh, relationships can also just remain at a transactional level meaning uh, okay you know i am i'm doing this uh, in in one particular event uh, brother you know your ministry y'all are good at doing something else how about we work together so it's very transactional like you do this i'll do that we'll do ministry together and that is what is our that is what our relationship looks like now the kind of uh, relationship that paul is talking about you know when he calls timothy brother fellow worker and uh, a, a minister of god is a deeper relationship okay i want to use the term genuine genuine relationship and, and you know genuine relationship uh, the the kinds that we have uh, in families where you know it's it's just so natural it's natural it's not that okay you give me this i'll give you that and you know if we don't perform then hey you know i don't know you it doesn't work like that you know we in in the families uh, siblings spouses we we kind of know one another really well and uh, we we work with you know we understand people's weaknesses but still you know, we're there for them they're there for us so it it's a genuine relationship it's a genuine and a strong relationship so when we're talking about uh, having relationships in the kingdom of god it's about strengthening and deepening and having a real and a genuine relationship with other ministers of god okay so that's what we are talking about not just a superficial uh, level of connect okay um so we'll just keep moving on you know section by section whatever is given here in our notes uh, so the next section here you know it talks about how uh, sometimes we as leaders struggle alone okay um it's it's like it's uh, you know it, it's not that god wants us to suffer alone but uh 
when we don't build these strong relationships in the kingdom of god um it feels like that it feels like hey you know i have nobody to stand with me and uh, it could happen uh, you know more so to uh, i'm just giving a, a scenario here maybe a pastor and a senior pastor who is very busy with the ministry and for whatever reason you know, he or she you know they uh, have not built these relationships over time and when ministry gets you know uh, really busy um then uh, you, you you kind of feel isolated sometimes and we know about the journey of of uh, ministry it's not always easy there are tough seasons okay uh, and sometimes it's not sufficient to have just your family members to share with because they may not understand all the uh, they if they are in the ministry great but even then they may not completely understand what one is going through but when we have you know strong and deep relationships uh, at that time it really really uh, strengthens uh, you know one spirit if we have a brother in the ministry or a sister in the ministry or a father in the ministry a mother in the ministry you know, who uh, we we can sort of bear our hearts and we can you know um uh, be open we can be vulnerable and you know they are there to speak into our into our hearts and they are not afraid of you know bringing correction and telling us things in a in a in a clear way in a plain way without hiding the truth uh, to have those kind of relationships you know it it's very important and particularly in the time of adversity because one needs uh, uh, scriptures say that you know we do need we do need uh, you know brothers and uh, uh, people who will stick together with us so the the whole point that you know we're trying to make today is that one must develop these relationships in the kingdom of god and be very intentional about it uh, now uh, you know i if each of us think there are there are um, uh, examples of pastors and leaders that we can think of uh, who have probably not had uh, uh, this you know this kind of relationship where they were not able to open up and they ended up in um, you know trouble they just went on with whatever they were they were struggling with and there was nobody to really speak into their lives and you know things got worse so uh, one does not want to be in that uh, extreme position so uh, we must really invest in building such relationships the next section here i mean i just thought that it was so beautiful that i probably don't have the language to explain it as well as it is written so i'm just going to read it out and i'm sure it will minister to our hearts so this section is um on page 99 and i will read it uh, a personal challenge okay so this is what uh, pastor has written he's written um, to be a brother to another minister of god i need to spend time with him to really get to know him i need to spend time with him and his family and watch how he treats his wife and children i need to spend time at his church or ministry office with his staff and see how he works with his staff i need to invite him to my home and my church or office we must spend time where we worship pray and see god together i need to lay hands on him and pray for him i need to have him lay hands on me and pray for me i need to stand by him in times of difficulty and journey with him through it i need to celebrate his success and moments of victory with him i need to be able to uh, i need to be available for him when he needs counsel or advice similarly i need to be able to reach out to him for his counsel i need to receive from his gift anointing and ministry similarly he must receive through the gift anointing and ministry that god has placed in me i must honor him for who he is in god and similarly he honors me for who i am in god we must partner with each other as friends i must sacrifice and give 
for his personal welfare and his family. When people hate him, criticize him, I must stand in defense and still be his friend. We need to be such friends, such brothers in the kingdom. So no, again, it's really beautiful and it, it drives the point home uh, to build these strong relationships where on both sides, you know, it's, it, it's uh, uh, giving and receiving at both ends. And uh, these will make for you know, a strong kingdom, a uh, strong kingdom of God. OK, now we've understood what kind of genuine relationships one must build with other ministers of God. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, brothers who may stumble. Now, one of the uh, wonderful things about being in a genuine relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ is if we are in error, or let's say that person is in error, there is uh, an opportunity for correction. Uh, there's a scripture from Galatians 6 and verse 1, end of page 99. Would somebody please be able to read this passage? This uh, verse, Galatians 6, 1, please. I can read. Yeah, yes, please. Thank you. Galatians 6 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, so uh, you know we we see here that you know, there is an opportunity to correct somebody, um, or it's not just about correction. It's it's more about restoration, you know, restoring the individual back uh, into the call and the destiny that God has for that person. We when we relate as brothers. No, it's a lot easier to do. And uh, um, we've already spoken about how challenging it is to speak the truth in love, particularly when someone is, is uh, you know, not on the right track. When we have a relationship, you know, with another minister of God, as a minister of God, we can help bring them back. We can speak life. We can uh, provide counsel. We can provide direction and the support that one uh, would need you know, in, during that span of time, obviously, you know, when, when one stumbles, uh, it might take a duration of time for that individual to, to uh, repent, to, um, you know, change uh, and to uh, align themselves to what God is calling them to do. Uh, and as brothers, we can stand with them through that process uh, and it, wouldn't it be so wonderful uh, if ministers of God uh, stood by you know, other ministers of God, and especially when when we notice that someone has fallen or, you know, somebody is falling. Uh, if there are brothers, then quickly step in or basically relationships, strong relationships, others can step in, you know, and, and uh, uh, they can they can be there to see that restoration. Uh, but again, on the other hand, uh, if we don't have those genuine relationships where we really care and love one another when we see a brother stumble you know it's easy to to join with the the people who criticized with the accusers uh, you know the people who publicize the news and make things worse for that minister of god and how many ministers of god you know would have actually suffered like this because they they felt alone Maybe one of the reasons why they never opened up uh, is because they couldn't trust, you know, other others in the kingdom, and they felt that hey, like if I share what I'm going through now, uh, you know, I, I'll I'll be uh, you know sh shut down, and so will uh, my my ministry and my family will have to pay the price, and you know there'll be other repercussions. So uh, it's unfortunate if if that. Uh, is the situation that one faces when when you know maybe they have stumbled in some way so uh, when we have genuine re relationships 
restoration is possible. Okay, uh, and uh, people can step in. People can actually be there for that uh, fallen minister of God. And with, as Scripture says, you know, with meekness and with gentleness, they can bring correction and uh, see that brother thrive once again. Okay. Uh, so the next section here is uh, again about genuinely loving uh, a brother in Christ. We've already read that passage from 1 John chapter 2. Um, and uh, this is a repetition you know, where, where we are being encouraged once again to not carry um, you know, ill feeling about a, a brother or a sister in ministry in our hearts uh, again. No, it, it is really possible as we are serving together you know, that we rub one another the wrong way. And uh, with the thought of that particular person, you know, we, all, those wrong, all those emotions come up of anger, of, of uh, you know, frustration. It just you know, uh, the memories are so unpleasant that you don't want to relate with that person. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've already said that as far as possible, we must overcome these feelings um, and uh, see if we can make peace with every single minister of God. Now, we may choose to work uh, more closely with some ministers as compared to the others. That's OK. That's understandable. You know, we, we uh, need not um, go out of our way to make you know, a, a working relationship happen with every person in the kingdom of God. That's not what is being asked here. But you know, to just have that peaceful and a good and a cordial relationship with every uh, minister in the kingdom, now that is, that is possible. Okay, that is definitely possible, uh, and uh, one must work towards it, uh, if at all. You know, through the journey of um, our ministry or relating with other uh, ministers of God, if there has been you know some form of hurt, um, then we must look at ways to resolve it. Uh, or you know, because of our personal insecurities, if you know, we are going through issues uh, where uh, we are envious of others. We are envious and jealous of uh, the ministry accomplishments of you know, some other. Maybe you know, I, I have a church, but you know, there is another brother uh, in our city who has a bigger church, who has a better format of doing church. Or you know, maybe I am a minister. I preach the word. There's somebody who is much better a preacher than me. I teach the word, but there's somebody more. Oh, you know, they're they they're very thorough. They're very eloquent with with their uh, teaching. Now, if I am personally insecure, then again, you know, to be able to relate with others, um, it's I I would rather you know be by myself and uh, uh, feel good, you know, by myself than connect with other ministers of God. These are all the issues, and we we've, we've touched on this when we talked about a minister's character. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, to relate you know, genuinely and maintain that love for uh, other brothers and sisters, we must really uh, check these things. OK, and put the past behind us. Sorry. Yeah, put the past behind us. You know, we've um, talked about that, uh, have the, the wounds, if at all, you know, some wounds were caused. Uh, just ask the Lord to work, just ask the Spirit of God to minister uh, to us, our soul, our spirit, and um, come free of those things so that you know, we can uh, serve from a place of security and love and relate with others. Okay, uh, and the last section here talks about. Uh, arising of fathers and mothers in the kingdom of God. Now, just as much as we have talked about being a brother to a uh, minister of God, mm, being a father and a mother is also an intentional thing. Okay, uh, Ministry can keep us very busy. And uh, uh, one can be so occupied that after years of ministry, one realizes that there are no successes, you know. There was no investment made in the life of a younger uh, a person, right? A younger minister of God. So uh, 
this is not just you know detrimental to a local church now suppose you know i have not invested uh, in the lives of we've talked about this when we talked about you know mentoring fathers and mothers find somebody who is way younger than us maybe even 20 years younger than us 25 years younger than us and then if we sense that special connection that god uh, has you know, for us to mentor that person we must see how we can start investing in that individual and walk with them you know journey with them and by the time you now we are ready to retire you have all these okay yeah uh, by the time we're ready to retire we have all these uh, younger folks who have been equipped who are um, you know tempered in a in a way ready to launch out you know just uh, uh, around when you are um, in a sense ready to settle down okay so that will be a beautiful thing and when we uh, saw that example of joshua we saw that you know, joshua and his uh, peers they they did so well they they um, uh, fought enemies they conquered uh, pieces of uh, you know their uh, territories but when they were about to settle down and stop doing what they were called to do the younger generation we we uh, read that passage in fact it's in your notes uh, in the book of joshua we saw that the the younger generation did not know the lord okay so they had no clue what joshua and the other elders had done for the kingdom and what the relationship um, which they had with god looked like and that is the most unfortunate thing that you know we live this era of if you want to call it you know revival awakening outpouring of the holy spirit and all of that you know it's it's thrilling it's exciting but when when we are all done okay and uh, we we are ready to uh, maybe move on to roles where you know god may be calling us in an apostolic way to to minister to um, you know government leaders and things like that we don't have any successors who can continue to impact you know the local church the kingdom of god in various ways because uh, the the uh, fathers and mothers you know, as paul says you have many instructors but you don't have any fathers so nobody really invested in the lives of the younger ones in the kingdom of god and and you know that is something we must be aware of and see how we can overcome uh, this deficit and uh, make sure that we are strengthening younger ministers in the kingdom of god so this is a, a little bit about being a brother being a father and a mother in god's kingdom so along these lines you know if there are uh, points that you would like to uh, discuss we we can do that mm, maybe i'll just ask uh, a question and and that can uh, help us think along these lines how can how can uh, one be a genuine brother or a sister uh, to fellow ministers in the kingdom of god how 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 can i be you know that genuine brother or you know genuine sister or how can you be a genuine brother or a genuine sister so you know uh, any thoughts on that how to be a genuine brother or sister Uh, yes, yes. Okay, Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy. Yeah, please go ahead. By being humble and teachable, when you do something wrong. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so Kennedy saying um, attitude of humility, uh, being teachable that helps us be a good brother. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Anita. Uh, is adding to that. She says, "For God so loved the world." Okay, Anita, can you can you expand on that? So, is it by by loving them? Okay, while we wait for Anita yeah. to 
Yeah, yes, Sanita, go ahead. Uh, like, uh, whenever we meet any brother or sister, if that word comes in our mind, like, God so loved him that he gave his one and only uh-huh. one. Like, she, when he, that, with that love, we can love them. Mm. We remember that. Yeah. With our, yeah, because uh, when we have to love, we see so many characteristics which we cannot love with, but because of God, we can love. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. That's, that's beautiful. So we can love with God's love, which he has given us. And uh, Abhishek adds faithfulness. So we can be faithful in our relationship with other brothers and sisters. So uh, would anyone like to share how you have been a brother or you have some people you know, who have stood with you uh, through your ministry journey or your Christian walk and how that has strengthened you, these relationships? OK, Rose. Uh, Rose is answering our first question uh, about being a genuine brother, treating everyone as family. Okay, little family and looking through the eyes of Jesus and how he sees the brothers and sisters. Okay, instead of our own, uh, our own faulty spectacles. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rose. That's wonderful. So true. Yeah. So Prabhakar, treat others as you want to be treated. Yep. So, so true. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, Charles, coming to you. I'll just read the comments here first. Uh, <clears throat> Samuel <throat> says, uh, so many ways to assume that the other person knows something that I don't and that I can always learn from him or her. Yes, that's that's right. Uh, to have a heart of compassion, knowing that even he or she is serving the Lord that I am serving. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so if we can uh, um, incorporate all these things, have it, develop it, then you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll make good brothers and sisters for others. Uh, yes, Charles, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. OK, thank you. Um, uh, the, the person that has helped me walk uh, is the, the wife of the pastor. Uh, when I joined the church, um, after my getting saved and then she is the one who did the discipleship part. She taught me the, the 16 lessons for discipleship. And then there was a program that the church was running of hear, see, and, and learn. So she even would take me with them to go for open air evangelism, door to door evangelism. She, she continued and made sure that I am in the children's ministry. She's the one who recommended me to, to go for studies for children's ministry. And right now she is um, sending me uh, daily messages on how to, to raise up uh, Christian children. So she's been there for me. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for sharing. Um, so this is someone you know who has helped Charles in his spiritual walk and his ministry journey. Mm. So Charles, this would be more like a spiritual mother, right? Uh, uh, how about a brother or a sister where, where we pour into their lives, but you know they also uh, pour into our lives. So it's, it's both ways. It's both ways. A walk with them. So, anyone, uh, you have any example about a brother or a sister? Yes, I have a, a brother. is is also part of the home cell that I attend. Yes, it's like we are having what we call accountability. Is my accountability partner? Uh, make sure that I am I am having prayers. Make sure that I have attended church, but also I check on him. We visit one another. We 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 share the the same uh, devotional materials. Uh, our children meet. So 
Yeah, she, he is called Perez. He is is my friend. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Charles. So uh, it's nice, and I like what you said at the end. You know, you said he's my friend. So uh, having fellow ministers as friends is uh, so key. Mm, and uh, you know, uh, as we said earlier, it's it's always very helpful when you have people of the same gender uh, who um, who do life with you, who know you really well, and even in the ministry, you know, when you have um, people that. Of the same gender, usually, uh, to whom you can open up, and it's always safer that way. Uh, so, just like from my life, I think uh, finding fellow ministers, finding fellow ministers uh, as as a um, lady in the ministry, it's not always easy because the proportion of men somehow it seems to be, uh, at least I like you know, perceptibly it seems more. Uh, but you know there are there are um, women there are so many women from church that you know I I know of for several years and you know, they've seen my journey I've seen their journey um, and uh, it's it's so helpful like just to be able to uh, open up and share uh, and you know when when we are going through like when you're when you're in the ministry right sometimes what happens is uh, the her expectation is to to really appear strong. Because you have to be there, you have to be preaching, you have to be sharing, you have to be teaching, you have to know the answers, right? So, some for for some of us as ministers, uh, we kind of try to hide behind that uh, facade, and uh, we never really um, uh, get an opportunity to reveal that that side of us where you know we we do need help or we do need counsel we do need uh, a, a listening ear but when you have you know brothers and sisters so i have you know a couple of women who uh, know me pretty well and you know there are there are times when they know my journey as well like right from the early days uh, of ministry so i can i can share with them even after i've preached a message and i felt like you know it was it was just not uh, up to the mark you know i i made all these mistakes Mistakes. I never want to preach again. You know, or, or I can just sit with them. I can share that, or I can I can tell them, hey, these are my personal challenges. Uh, you know, I, I'm concerned about uh, these aspects of my personal life. Uh, could you please pray with me? Could you please, you know, pray through till uh, I, I see uh, these results, or I'm I'm going up for this uh, conference, or I'm going to be ministering here, and I don't feel up to it. You know, could you just uphold me in prayer? And you know, the reason why I'm not feeling up to it is, you know, X, Y, and Z. I really open up, really open up, or you know, I could I could just share with them and say, look, I'm really having a problem with anger, or I'm really having a problem with um, jealousy. Uh, so I don't really have to hide anything. With those people, because uh, I'm just giving you some some example. You can just have all these open conversations where you know they, uh, some of them they are uh, ministers themselves. You know, one particular um, lady, she's a preacher and a really wonderful preacher. I've always uh, like from my uh, uh, younger days, you know, I've always admired the way she talks. When she speaks, it's it's like she's been with Jesus. You know, it's like that. So when I share, she's able to share. And say, hey, look, and see, this is the issue, or that is the issue. Um, why can't you think of some practical ways of you know, taking on lesser work and make more time for rest? So just simple things that that we are not able to share with others. Maybe I won't be able to share all this with somebody in my congregation because I have a different relationship with them, or even my family member. They may not understand ministry challenges, but when I'm able to open up with a fellow minister of God, uh, they can speak into my life, and I don't have to be afraid. And I even this thing about stumbling, right? Uh, when there is a multitude of counselors, uh, there is safety. That's what scripture says. And we don't have to go finding too many counselors. Even if we have one or two such people that we can open up with, you know, it really, really is a blessing. And, you know, vice versa. There are times when I have um, spoken into their lives and I've told them, hey, look, this is not right. Or, uh, you know, why is, why is this happening? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe... Uh, 
you're not you're not taking in the right content you know you're looking i mean uh, why why are you having these negative thoughts maybe you're spending too much time on your phone maybe you're spending too much time uh, you know um uh watching a certain uh, here listening to uh, a certain material so very openly we're able to just speak into each other's lives strengthen one another be real and that's the whole point to be real and not to be that uh, you know i'm that preacher person or i'm that ministry person i'm that kingdom person yes we are all that we are all that but we do need others who can uh, journey along with us and it it's like we understand the humanness right we understand the the challenges we understand uh, the the moments where one needs that lift okay uh, so uh, just somebody to to be there to listen and not judge okay these are all priceless things and uh, if we can have it uh, in our journey uh, if we can develop it we can also try to be that brother or sister to someone and uh, if we find such brothers and sisters uh, it will really strengthen the work of god and the kingdom of god okay uh, all right uh, so we will uh, take a break now and also I'll just quickly read rose's point here she says uh, also pastor what we do to the brethren we do to jesus himself yeah yeah that's that's good uh, rose so uh, let's take a break now we'll come back and we'll talk a little more about being fathers okay, being fathers and mothers so we've uh, focused in on being brothers and sisters so far if you have any questions you know we can start there in the next session but we will uh, uh, look keenly at being fathers and mothers okay so it's 10:52 uh, let's come back at 11:02 and uh, start again yeah thank you